Hodge. And I'm Tiffany. And, and this, this is Terrell. And our mom. And you're watching, watching The Puzzle Kids Cookie Show. Woohoo! Oh, yeah. again, 
and red again. Almost like a peppermint stick. And then we're going to put it in a diamond shape. Take it from the center so you can bunch it up together like if you would a flower. And for now, we're just going to sit it in the bag until our cookies are ready so you can kind of get an idea of how this is going to look. See, so you would have it in your bag and so we have our pretty green and white uh, Christmas bag. We got some snowmen. We have the cute little pink one, you know, like Chili Willy, but this is not Chili Willy. Uh, got some Merry Christmas. We got some trees and presents, a Santa Claus, and my favorite, peppermint or candy cane on here. So, Tiffany, how's our box coming along? All done. So, now she has our little box ready. See, not too big, not too small, but just the right size to put plenty of cookies in as a gift. So, now, Tiffany... If you may, can you please put the bowl on top? See our red beautiful bowl here? That's the bowl we were talking about. She's going to take the little sticky part off and we're going to stick it right there on top and then when we come back, we'll have everything fully put together for you while our cookies are baking and then we'll show you a finished product at the end after today's sidebar. Thank you. And now it's time for today's Sidebar. Okay, so today's sidebar comes from a website called AutisticMama.com. My daughter took the liberty of finding today's sidebar for us. So I, I have so. quite a few of them written down, so I will be kind of looking up and down to uh, make sure I give you every last detail that is on here. So, number one is ask ahead. Uh, you have to ask the, the parents or the autistic child in question here. If you're able, how can you help them for the holiday? Number two, you need to make autism friendly food. Um, a lot of autistic kids have struggles with eating, so it's a good idea to ask ahead. You can either ask the parents or you could try to ask the child if they are verbal. More likely, ask the parent because most of the time, in our, like in our case, I have one verbal and one semi-verbal. So make sure you ask the parent ahead of time what kind of food their child likes, okay? And what kind of food you'll have on hand. In my case, I'll use my mom as an example. If I go to my mom's house, I hope she has plenty of Hot Pockets available because that's generally what my youngest son, whereas opposed to my oldest son, who's a little more uh, lenient with food or food friendly, he'll eat almost anything. That's why he's a big old guy. <laughs> well, anyway, number three, be flexible with your expectations, okay? Oftentimes we have expectations with how the holidays will go and that we don't even stop to think about it. So we have too many expectations on how we think holidays are gonna go. In our house, we throw expectations out the window. And we do that because I never know what's gonna happen with either of my boys. Uh, with my oldest son, He's easier to deal with, he's more manageable, where my youngest son is more livelier and more giddy and more, we're going to tear the tree down before Christmas comes in, upset mommy. <coughs> Excuse me. You see where I get the dramatic from? <laughs> anyway, I learned from the best over here. But, all jokes aside, you know, he gets a little more into the holiday, so I never know what to expect. So I always make sure that when I am decorating, which I will show you a little clip later, uh, and make sure that everything is Terrell friendly. And when I say Terrell friendly, I mean stuff that if it breaks, it's not going to break my heart or my budget or, or my feelings, so to speak. Okay? Number four, um, plan a sensory retreat ahead of time. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, a sensory retreat is basically a room. It could be... A, a, a grandparents, excuse me, bedroom or a guest bedroom, somewhere in the house of somewhere you're going to be visiting. And that room is a room where that child can go and be themselves. You have a child that could be a simmer, which is the back and forth and then the hand clapping like I told you guys around Mother's Day when I was explaining to you the difference between my oldest and my youngest son who are both on the spectrum. So you have to have a room in the area that's comfortable for them to do the things that they like to do so they could be comfortable with the situation that's taking place. Because where my youngest son could care less if it's a room full of people, my oldest son is not really comfortable with the room full of people. So you have to have a space comfortable for them to be able to, you know, 
slowly gra and gradually be able to be around, you know, a crowd of people, especially if it's people that they don't know. So make sure you have a separate room that the kids can be in or somewhere where it's more peaceful, more calm, lights are on, sound is low, where they can try to gradually get comfortable with being around the crowd so that when they do come out to the crowd, you know what to expect. And we're not asking a lot of questions like, what's wrong? Is he okay? Something wrong with him? You know, stuff like that. Those questions get tired after a while as a parent. Number five is explain autism to other family members. So this part of this video definitely goes out to my family on my mother's side. My sons are ASD, Autism Spectrum Disorder. Meaning that cognitively, sometimes they cannot relate to you as a person or they don't relate to a lot of people as a person. I have a son who is verbal and a son who is semi-verbal. A lot of the things that you try to talk to them when you're talking to them and they don't understand it because they physically don't understand. That doesn't mean they're retarded. That doesn't mean that they're stupid. They're just letting you know that that is the best way that they communicate. And I am, as their mother, warning you guys and letting you guys know ahead of time what's going on. I've never taken the time to share that with you all. So I'm letting you know what it is. And when my children come around, just like how I do with your children, please make them feel as comfortable as possible and a part of the family. And that's not just for my family, that's for every family who's dealing with autism spectrum disorder in their household because you all have no idea what it is that we go through as parents of children on the spectrum. Especially on behalf of the siblings. <coughs> <coughs> what she said. And last but never least, but the most important of them all, which is number six, overall, be loving. Ugh. Yeah, she don't like love. So I guess she won't be doing the Valentine's Day episode. I don't know, but we'll mm. see. Huh, T? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. What's the villain on the Valentine's Day thing? Oh, no one cares. Day. <coughs> so, having an autism-friendly Christmas. Um, I know I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys don't understand that, but like I explained to you about having um, a sensory retreat room, it's the same thing in this case. Um, with us, with autism, we try to do everything as calm, cool, and collective as possible, but we do everything catered around to our boys. So from the shopping of the toys to the decorating of the house to the amount of lights that we have, everything is catered to our children. And our daughters, as much respect as I can give um, to them, I give them kudos, a hundred million percent for allowing us as parents to be parents and sacrificing a lot of their time and free time and play time to help make sure that their brothers um, are comfortable around other people. And I know my oldest daughter um, defends them very well, so I'm not necessarily worried about that, but I'm very grateful to have the children that I have that are very understanding and very encouraging and are uh, doing this show to basically explain to you all what it's like living the life of siblings um, that are autistic and their struggles and their life. And a lot of this could be funny games and jokes uh, that they have with you when they're doing this show, but a lot of this is just to teach you all what it's like living in their lives and having autistic brothers. Okay? So be loving, be respectful, be kind. Because you never know who you're talking to. You never know who you're dealing with and what the circumstance is. And that doesn't just go for autistic people. That goes for everyone as a whole. So if you have any questions for us, comment below or inbox me on Instagram. And let me know if you have questions and concerns or if you need some advice on how to deal with your loved one who is autistic or how to deal with your, how, excuse me, to deal with your own child who is autistic. Because sometimes it just takes that leap of faith and asking that one question that might save your whole life. And that's today's sidebar. Thank you. Thank you very much. So welcome back, guys. So now our cookies are done, and Chef Tiffany is going to put them inside of the bag. As you can see, she already put her bowl on, like I told you earlier. Okay, and so now we'll put the paper in. Okay. Oh, it's making
make it look nice and fluffy. It's a reason why you do that. And then remember the name tag I showed you in the beginning, which happened to be my name. I just thought that was interesting. Uh, just picked up the first one I had in the bunch. And we're going to put it on the bag. And that's it. And here you go. A I nice Christmas gift for a loved one. What you think, girl? I Pretty hope cool. they enjoy it. I know they're going to enjoy the cookies. You yeah. might need some milk yeah. with that. Well, maybe not y'all like folks and tolerant people. I'm watching y'all. Anyway, but that's it. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And follow us at PKCF2018 on Instagram. Thank you very much. And one last thing before we go. Merry Christmas, Christmas from the Puzzle Kids Cooking Show. Woohoo! Oh, yeah. Hey.